So this is the section of DNA. It's around about 27 marks in your paper, give or take. So let's say from anywhere between like 23 to 30 marks, let's give the DBE a bit of leeway. So question 1.1, identify parts B, C, and D. So in the diagram below, a portion of a DNA molecule has been represented. So B represents a nitrogen base, uh, one of the four types, uh, adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine, um, and these are involved in base pairing. C, part C, it represents a phosphate group, which together with a deoxyribose forms the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA strand. And D represents a hydrogen bond connecting the nitrogen bases from the two complementary strands of DNA. Question 1.2, monomer A is a nucleotide, which consists of a phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogen base. Let me just quickly fill in the answers. B, name one organelle in a cell where DNA is located. Answer here simply is the nucleus, as it houses the cell's genetic material in the form of chromatin or chromosomes. 1.3, how many nucleotides are shown in the diagram? So here we would need to count the repeating units of sugar, phosphates, and nitrogen bases. And based on the diagram as given here, the answer is going to be four nucleotides. Question 1.2, let's just get some quick fire questions underway. Feel free to pause the video, answer the questions by yourself, and let's go through it. So the sugar found in RNA, this is going to be ribose. The bond that forms between two amino acids, that is going to be a peptide bond. The stage of protein synthesis during which mRNA forms DNA, this is going to be transcription. The type of RNA connecting anticodons, this is going to be tRNA. Look at how I spell it. Five, the organelle in a cell where translation occurs. This is going to be a ribosome. Six, the type of nucleic acid that carries a specific amino acid. This is going to be tRNA once more. Seven, the nitrogenous base found only in RNA molecules. The answer here, uracil. No, uracil. That was a terrible joke. Please don't uh, exit the video. Let's, uh, let's keep going. 1.3, state two differences between a DNA nucleotide and an RNA nucleotide. They love asking these little questions in paper too. So DNA, it contains sugar deoxyribose. I'm just gonna put deox. RNA contains sugar ribose. Key difference here. So that was one, let's go to DNA. It contains the nitrogen base thymine. So NB, nitrogen base, thymine, and RNA. Let's just make that look like a better N. Sure, the level of handwriting here, here, a bit controversial. Okay, look, you guys know what I mean. They both say RNA. Um, second, RNA, this RNA contains a nitrogen base, NB. Do you know what that means nota bene, like in Latin, like remember well, nota bene. You thought you came here for bio, you came here for a little something, something else. Um, and it, RNA contains a <laughs> nitrogen base here called uracil. Okay, let's keep moving. Question two, this is more focused on DNA structure. So the diagram below represents a DNA molecule. Um, identify molecule X, this is going to be a nitrogen base. The sugar at Y, deoxyribose. Is it deoxy or deoxy? I know some of my private students have told me different things, you know, just based on what their teachers have said. I think it's deoxy. Ribose. Look, pronunciation doesn't matter, I just know how to spell it, as a belief. Bond W represents a hydrogen bond. The collective name for parts X, Y, and Z, so there's X, there's Y, there's Z, we call it a nucleotide. State the natural shape of a DNA molecule. The answer here, relatively basic question, this one, it's a level one question. Double helix. You know, I've, uh, I had a helix piercing not too long ago. I was actually 17 years old when I got my helix in my left ear, but it got, uh, it got a bit infected, so I decided to take it out, and it left a bit of a bump in my ear, but yeah, um, I've got like my body pierced like 10 times, and I've got like 7 existing piercing holes, but I only wear, uh, I only wear one, just one on my nose, but I've still got like my ears and doubles. Yeah, just a bit about me, hey, I'm a, I'm a real person, I'm not a robot. 
I'm, I'm not a robot bio teacher. Okay, that was, that was a bit cringy. Let's continue. Uh, so the natural shape of a DNA molecule is a double helix. And this is a twisted ladder-like structure. It was uh, developed by two, um, two fellows named uh, Watson and Crick, your teacher might have, might have discussed that with you. Uh, 2.4, name the process whereby DNA makes a copy of itself. Makes a copy, I think this one is really easy. It's simply, it's DNA replication. Like, even if you didn't know, you could have worked a plan here, chief. Um, and this occurs during the S phase of the cell cycle um, and ensures that the genetic information is passed accurately to the daughter cells at play. Okay. 2.5, name two places in an animal cell where DNA is located. So we've got two possible answers here. One is going to be the nucleus and two is going to be the powerhouse of the cell, mitochondria. So the nucleus, the majority of DNA um, in cells is found in the nucleus. And with the mitochondria, uh, this contains a small amount of circular DNA known as mitochondrial um, DNA. And we're represented by MT DNA. Not to be confused with MDMA, that very hard drug. Hoo -hoo, bad, bad things here. You thought it was, it's, it's not an aloe lesson. Don't worry about it. Should I have made some aloe videos for your aloe common assessment task? I think I, I should have, but I only decided to start the YouTube channel a lot later to supplement the workshops that we give. You, know, you guys may have seen it. Leaves Tutors, we're, we're pretty much everywhere, so I'm contracted by them, and I, I push out advertising, and I give a lot of their workshops. But sure, anyway, let's not get too sidetracked. Let's keep, keep moving. Let's keep it pushing. Push and pee. I still don't know what that means, but I heard it like two years ago. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue. 3.1, describe the process of DNA replication. So we've got like five things just to mention here. So one, two, three, four, and five. So firstly, the double helix, it unwinds. Next, weak hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen bases break and the DNA unzips. So hydrogen bonds break. And then the DNA, it unzips. Three, both of the original strands serve as a template on which the DNA complement is built. So both NB, um, both strands, they serve as a template. It's just summarizing the steps here. Number four, free DNA nucleotides build a strand onto each of the two DNA strands attaching to their complementary bases. So two nucle nucleotides to two strands. Strand is actually a really lovely place close to Stellenbosch. It's in Western Cape, Veskarp. Strand actually means beach, okay? Um, one's gonna be Afrikaans, bro. So all life sciences doing in Afrikaans. Can can you Afrikaans, bro? Okay, uh, number five. Okay, no, I'm, I'm joking, hey? I, I had you going there. I really had you going. You were stressed, like, oh my God, is he really going to give the, le the, the rest of this lecture in Afrikaans? There's something wrong with him. Okay, let's, uh, let's, con let's continue. We're getting sidetracked here, guys. Come on, focus. Two identical DNA molecules are formed, and this each consists of one original and one new strand. So one orange and one new. And that's it for DNA replication. Question four, the diagram below shows a technique used in paternity testing. Is he the father? I don't know if you guys watch like those very like American things, you know, like is he the father, isn't he? And if he's not the father, but he loves the child, oh, you know, that's still my child. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hey, I, I watch a lot of nonsense on YouTube. I, I have watched, but I'm away from all of that now, dude. I'm away. Okay, so paternity testing. 4.1, identify the technique shown above. The technique shown above is DNA profiling, paternity testing. Okay, so that's what we've got here. 4.2, which male is the biological father of the child? Okay, I'm just going to give you guys the answer first, and then we'll explain it in 4.3. So we first compare that the mother and the child have in common. So we compare the, the bands that they have in common. And then we check which of the males have the rest of the bands that overlap with the rest of the child's bands in the profile and it's going to be male three you see this we can go band for band so relatively easy question here you just kind of mix and match see what completes the mother and the child so the mother and child we need to see what they have in common and then how either well all three of these males what they have in common that could just you know slot in and complete the mother and the child and last question, 4.4. Uh, state two other uses of this technique. Um, 
one and two so we can identify. So this is all about identification, right? It's DNA profiling. So identify criminals. We can identify dead bodies as well. And well, in a scenario like this, we can identify our relatives. Yeah, that's it.